Good morning and welcome to day 146 of our 365 days of studying the Bible and the different kinds of literature that are in it. At the moment we're looking at the statutes and laws of old Israel and particularly during these few days the laws relating to human behaviour towards God and worship. Today we have an early reference to God as our Father. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 1 to 10 and I'll turn you around so you can see the text. Moses said, If you obey all the laws I have given you today, then you will live. You will increase in numbers, and you will take over the country which Yahweh promised to your forebears. You will have to remember how Yahweh your God has led you on this long forty-year journey through the wilderness. He sent you hardships as a test to find out your intentions, to see if you would obey him. He made you go hungry before he fed you with manna, food your forebears had never known, to teach you that people mustn't just depend on bread, but on everything Yahweh says. In those forty years your clothes haven't worn out, nor have your feet swollen up. Take note that Yahweh your God corrects you and punishes you like a father. So do what Yahweh has commanded. Live under his laws and obey. For Yahweh is bringing you into a productive land, a country with rivers and springs and underground streams that gush out among valleys and hills. It will produce wheat and barley, grapes, figs and pomegranates, olives and honey for you. In that country, nobody will go hungry or go short. Its rocks contain iron, and you can mine copper from its hills. You will have everything you want to eat, and you will give thanks to Yahweh your God for the productive land that he has given to you. These ten verses from old, from ancient Deuteronomy, are crucial to our human understanding of God. They are often read at uh, Christian harvest festivals to remind us that it is God who provides. From these ancient words, Jesus has given us two important things to remember. How pleasant it is to find that the roots of Jesus' teachings go so far back in the history of our faith. What starts off here as harsh warnings comes to us as sublime blessings. First, in Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11, we are told the story of Jesus being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Satan tries to tempt Jesus in a number of ways, including the inappropriate use of words from the book of Psalms, thus making the point that it is possible to use the words of scripture inappropriately and with evil intent. But first, he tempts Jesus with hunger, saying to Jesus that he has the power and authority to turn the desert rocks into loaves. Jesus replies with a quotation from the Greek Old Testament version of this passage. Scripture says, people can't just live on bread, they also need every word that God has spoken. You might have heard that translated as, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. The original writer of Deuteronomy was wanting to emphasise that although God has tested his people with hardship, he has also provided for them and would continue to do so. By the time those Greek-speaking Jews translated it in the mid-3rd century BC, they understood it slightly differently, similar to the way Christians were to understand it afterwards. They took it to mean that both sides of human nature are to be provided for by God, both our physical needs for food and security and also our mental and spiritual needs. The second thing that Jesus imports into Christian teaching from this passage is the news that God is our Father. As usual, Jesus turns the negative aspect of this news that God will discipline and punish us like a strict father 
into an amazingly positive picture of a loving and devoted dad. He even calls God Abba, and he continues by giving us, in a parable, the loving welcome of the prodigal son's father, who can't wait for his wayward son to finish his apology before eagerly welcoming him home. And of course, when asked by his followers for a prayer to memorise, uh, if you look at Luke 11, 1 to 4, he teaches us the Our Father. Tomorrow, we look at the origins of this uh, idea in Judaism that there is one God and only one place to worship him. I'll see you tomorrow.